So amid the busyness of a day, we come to our mats. I just invite you to really um, watch yourself doing that. Just observe yourself coming from the busyness to the sitting. Notice that it's always a little bit of a struggle to carve out this little chunk of time for ourselves. And allow yourself to just settle here. Maybe moving around enough to start to feel what is under you as a support, a seat. You can close your eyes or just look down, but bring your awareness inward. And as we take a few deep breaths and we just start to look inside of ourselves, I want to introduce the word for our practice today, purpose. Purpose, and in the English language, we can take that in a lot of different directions, but let's just start with purposeful sitting. We're never just sitting, we're sitting with purpose. The purpose right here being to center ourselves, to slow down, to look within. So as you take a few more breaths in, can you breathe with purpose? The purpose being to fill your body with fresh oxygen and to let go of carbon dioxide. Purposeful breath. Bring the shoulders up by the ears in a purposeful squeeze and then roll the shoulders back and down. And let's do some giant circles around the shoulders. The first place we notice tension in our bodies. Let these movements have purpose to them. So every single movement on our mat today will be done with an intention of being purposeful. We're going to do 59 push-ups today for my birthday. And we're going to do them with purpose, intentionally becoming stronger. Reach your arms up high, take a nice deep breath in, interlace your fingers, press the palms high, stretch your body tall. Breathing with purpose. Releasing those hands, come to the front of the knees and let's just start to move through a seated cat and cow. Maybe a little bigger than normal. Moving forward and back purposely as a way to just let breath come into spaces that it doesn't always find its way into. Come forward one more time, pull the shoulders onto the back, sweep the arms behind, interlace and open up, maybe even yawn. And let's bring ourselves around to the mat. We'll come into a tabletop position. So for today, this is a hip opening practice. And specifically, we're gonna work on opening across the hip flexors, which means we also need to work on <laughs> glute strength. All right, so starting right here in tabletop position, let's take our left toes back. Press into the hands, lift that leg until you feel glute, not low back. So notice if you come a little higher, it comes up into low back. I'd like you to just raise and lower to the point where you only feel glute doing that action. That should be smaller than what you're capable of doing. We're just gonna wake up those 
feet muscles. And then release and switch sides. Just a little wake up call for those muscles on the back of the body. So we're really gonna try to stay out of the low back today. We'll try to do some movements that open us across the front using the strong muscles and not the low back. All right, go ahead and lower that knee. Let's come back into child's pose. Stretch around the glutes. You might rock your body side to side, allowing your belly to fall between your legs. Breathe deeply here. Coming back up to that tabletop, let's create a fun little flow. So it's gonna go like this. You're gonna lift your left leg and bend your left knee, make a footprint on the ceiling. Again, if you start to feel that in the low back, it's gonna be a little bit lower. So it's just glute. Draw your belly in, press into your hands, tuck your right toes and lift slowly up into a downward facing dog. Let that left hip flexor stretch even more. Come forward again, drop the right knee, drop the left knee and press back into child's pose. Pause, feel. Purposeful movement. And we'll repeat on the other side. Come up to tabletop, pick up your right foot, make that footprint on the ceiling. Staying out of the low back, core can help with that. Tuck to your left toes. This is the uh, it's like it takes a little bit of a grunt to shift up high. And then just stretching across the right hip using your right glute. And then lowering to the left knee. Lower the right and drop back to child. So let's see about flow with breath. Coming forward, the left knee lifts, the right toes tuck and we extend and return. And switching to the left knee, tuck the left toes, raise all the way up high and back down. Do that one more time on each side. And back into child's pose. Turn your palms up, open and close your hands a few times. See if you're a little bit more warm and aware of your hips. All right, extending the hands forward, we're going to begin our yoga push-ups. So let's do 10. And uh, if you're not really comfortable doing yogi push-ups, one thing you can do is stay here on your knees, bend your elbows, and just do tiny little tricep presses. That's a great entry point. All the way down to 90 degree bend in your elbows. So we'll do 10. I'll keep track. Everyone loves birthdays around here. And when you hit 10, you get to rest in child's pose. And then once again, tabletop position, tuck your toes, lift your right leg all the way up. And this time, bend the knee, open the hip. See if you can feel a little bit more across the hip flexor. Nothing in the low back. Release and switch. So depending on what your low back is doing today, this could be a super small motion before you start to feel it in your back. Let's let the glutes 
do the work. Go ahead and switch. We'll take a slow walk to the top of our mat. Bending the knees, hanging down, forward fold. Press to lift halfway. And then let's sweep the arms all the way up. Extended mountain, come back down into chair. Moving with breath. We can move a little bit faster. Let's build a little bit of heat. Each time you stand up, can you feel your glutes pressing your hips slightly forward, using those strong muscles to not only avoid the low back, but also to support the low back. All right, let's continue on into sun salutations. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. One little change today. Take your right leg up only to where you feel your glutes. Shifting forward. Drop that left knee. And then the right, just like we did before. You're gonna lower halfway down and then all the way to the earth. Roll your shoulders onto your back. Pause right here. Lift that right leg again. And then releasing, come back into child's pose. Take a moment to stretch through the low back. Tucking the toes, lift your hips. And then we'll slowly walk the feet to the hands. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale, fold. Sweep the arms up. Hands to heart. Do that exact same thing again. Reach high. Bow low. Half lift. Downward facing dog. From here, everybody raise your left leg. Find the glute, not the low back. Shifting forward, we'll drop the right knee, then the left, lower halfway, and roll up, come to cobra. Lift your left leg, again, glute, not low back, just feeling that strength. Awesome, and then press back, child's pose. Breath in the low back. We have our work cut out for us today, don't we? Set number two, yogi push-ups. Come on forward. Remember, these can be small, or you can come halfway down. Ten push-ups. When you get to ten, child's pose. Tucking the toes, lift the hips, down dog. Let's take some time here to pedal through the heels. Our bodies are getting warmer, muscles are ready. Taking our feet a little bit wider, let's bring our hands back to our feet. Knees soft, lift halfway. Keeping that nice, strong back. Bring your hands behind you, interlace, and fold forward again. Don't you burn me, baby. The fire lies inside. Well, it's much brighter, baby. And with soft knees, lifting again. Let's come all the way up, extended mountain. And we'll come back again into that flowing chair. Keeping the heat. Can you hear the sound of your breath now, that ujjayi breath? You look amazing, beautiful. One more time, deep breath in, stretch tall. Let your hands come in front of your heart. 
bring those hands onto the back pockets and press your hips forward. Elbows squeeze back, chest lifts up. So again, hip flexor stretch, glute strength, no low back. That's it. All right, come neutral. Hinge from the hips. I'm gonna go ahead and slide your fingers down the backs of your legs, but keep your back flat. Feel those hammies starting to lengthen, stretching across the knees, lengthen, 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 and then fold. Heel, toe, heel, toe, your feet closer together. From here, raise your right leg up behind you. So you're in a three-point balance. Find the place where that glute is doing the work. There's nothing happening in the low back. Keeping that leg right where it is. We're gonna walk our hands forward. So you're gonna find yourself in a three-legged downward facing dog. Press into that left heel. Right glutes, right hip flexor, no low back. Come forward onto your left toes. Drop your left knee and drop the right. Press back to child. You should feel something different in both of your hips. Let's come forward for set number three, 10 yogi push-ups. And we get to 30. We're halfway there. 30 was half of the life I've lived already. <laughs> interesting perspective all right go ahead and tuck your toes lift your hips and the hands walk back to the feet finding yourself in that forward fold with fingertips down let's raise our left leg behind us finding that place where it's glutes not low back and the hip flexor is feeling that nice stretch. Keeping the glutes strong, keeping the core strong, walk the hands forward. Let's find that three-legged dog. And then as we come forward, the right knee drops, the left knee follows. What the heck, set number four. 40 push-ups, get these out of the way, huh? They can be small and you can stay on your knees. Try to protect your shoulder by stopping when you get halfway down. When you get to 10, stretch it out. All right, let's tuck the toes, walk the feet now to the hands, top of the mat. Lifting halfway. Paying a lot of attention now as you stand up, come from the glutes, press yourself up and through from your glutes, even into a little back bend. And then go the opposite way, hinge from your hips, come back into your forward fold. See if you can do that a couple of times, flat back, moving from those glutes and hinging from the hips. Building a lot of awareness in this part of the body, moving with purpose. Our purpose is to open the front of our hips using the strength of our back, our glutes, and not leverage. One more time, up and down, and then we'll stay right here. All right, let's begin with the left leg this time. Lift your left leg, glutes, not low back, bend the knee, and we're gonna do little presses right here. We're using a principle of fitness 
of opposition. Where one muscle is strong, its opposite muscle stretches. Go ahead and extend that leg behind you. Shift back to where that foot falls to the floor and then we'll drop the knee. Ooh. This is the first time we really get to stretch these muscles. So using the same purpose, can you squeeze with your glutes and feel this stretch, but not take it into the low back? This is a really great principle because a lot of us just dump down here. So can you stay up out of it just enough to squeeze glutes and stretch hip flexors? Breathe. Feel that hip opening in the front. And then let's tuck the back toes under, same thing. Can you feel that the glute is doing the work to help you open the hip flexor? Stay out of your low back. Bringing ourselves up to high lunge. And we're gonna stay out of the lunge just enough to feel glute. Notice the place exactly where it starts to dump into the low back. And we're gonna stay up out of that. Arms reach. Interlacing our fingers, hands pressed to the back of the head. Open up through the arms and shoulders. Breathe here in this little back bend. Massive hip flexor work. Strong glutes, open chest. Purposeful postures. All right, we're gonna take this into a little bit of a flow. So drop the back heel, lift the arms up into warrior one, bow over the front leg, sweep the arms behind. Should start to really feel that right hip talking. Hopefully not screaming, just talking. One more time, everybody. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, fingertips come down to the mat. Lift the back leg one more time. Bend the knee and press. Tell me if you're feeling your hips. Let me give you a little reward here. The back foot or that top foot is gonna cross behind. We're gonna come to this nice little crisscross legs. So the left leg is behind us. You're gonna walk your hands over toward the left foot. That should be a nice little reward for all that hard work you just did. Feel your breath. Nod your head yes, shake your head no. Breathe into the hips. And then we get to uncross. Woo! Feeling this. All right, press to half lift. We're gonna do all of that exactly the same. So we're coming up from the hips. Hip flexors press forward. Hinge and come back down. Which hip do you feel the most? Right or left? All right, coming back down. Let's bring the fingertips to the floor. Right leg lifts. Bend the knee and little presses. I promise. I know it doesn't seem like it right now, but I promise you'll thank me when all of this is said and done. Extend that leg, set the toes on the floor and drop the knee. So coming down into this kneeling lunge, exploring when it starts to creep up into the low back and just coming out of that so it's just glutes.
Nice. Keep everything the same, but let's tuck our back toes. And again, find that place where if we go too deep, it starts to creep up into the low back. We're gonna stay out of that sensation. Just glute muscles. Lifting ourselves up. Again, find it again. These, these postures keep changing gravity, so we have to keep adjusting and finding glutes, no low back. Let's interlace our hands, press our head back into our hands. Breathe here. Adding in that chest stretch, staying out of the low back. And let's release, drop the back heel. Arms come up into warrior one, moving from the hips. In that same way, fly the arms. So I'm harping on this low back thing today because the way the human body is built, we have such a tendency to dive into the low back. It's kind of a, a cheat that our body does. And so when we're purposeful about our movement, we use the larger muscles instead of dumping into those little weak places. Let's lower the hands to the mat. Let that right leg float up again, bend the knee and we'll pulse. Beautiful. Both feet down. Soft knees, let yourself stretch down here. And then take that right foot behind the left foot. Walking the fingers toward that back foot, your right foot. And stretching around that outer edge. Breathe deeply here, all down into your hips. And let's make our way back to center, stepping back into downward facing dog, and you know it. Set number five, come to the knees. We'll leave the hips alone for a moment, and we'll take 10 more yogi push-ups. Pull that navel up into the spine, let your core stay strong. Shoulders down away from the ears. When you get to 10, you get a little rest. All right, I think our bodies are a little bit warmer. I'm gonna see if they allow us to go a little more deeply into the hips. So let's come up onto all fours and step the right foot forward once again. Let's start this sequence with forward rocking and back, forward and back rocking. Moving slow. Try to keep the sensation, the hip flexor of the left leg, the hamstrings of the right. Just imagine your waistband is the boundary, it's the fence line and we want all the sensation to be happening below the waistband. Come back into a hamstring stretch. Hold here with toes back. Fingers walk forward. Just let those hamstrings wake up. And as we come forward, that foot comes to the floor tuck the back toes, step the back foot a little closer, same kind of stretch, pyramid. So folding over that right leg, the forehead comes toward the shin, lifting up through the right hip, pressing down through the right toes. Uh, 
All right, ready? We're gonna come back up to that three point balance. All 10 fingers come forward, left hip is strong, avoiding that low back. Option to stay right here. You can also bring your hand up to a block if you like. Right hand comes on to the low back. And if you like, twist to the right. Twisting half moon. Great big pose for the right standing leg. We're asking the left glute to be strong, left hip flexor to be open. As we release, the back toes drop. Let's come to center. Turn the toes out and let's just shake that off. Lunge left and right. Whew. You guys warm? <laughs> it's a lot of work through the big muscles. Feel free to stay on one side for a few breaths and just stretch or keep moving side to side. And we'll eventually find our way toward our left foot, dropping the right knee. We'll start to move forward and back. Hip flexor to hamstring. And relax your face, your jaw. Keep the attention below the waistband. Stay up out of that low back. And then we'll come back into that hamstring stretch. Walk your hands forward. Breathe into the length in the back of that leg. And same idea, drop that left foot, tuck the back toes, come into pyramid. We're lengthening through the crown of the head and as you lower forehead, comes to shin. Feel your left hip pressing back, left toes pressing down. Hips, right? Purposeful movement, very intentional. Walking the fingers forward, let's find that three-point balance. Grab a block if you'd like to have your hands on something. And then either staying here or moving into twisting half moon. So left hand to low back, open your chest and see about lifting a hand. Left leg saying thank you. Really appreciate this. <laughs> Glutes, not low back. One more breath here, friends. And then release. Set those toes down. Step back to downward facing dog. And you guessed it. Final set. Nine, just nine yogi push ups. And the birthday rule is when you get to that final number, you have to say out loud, happy birthday. Today, it's happy birthday, Denise. And then we get to pause in child's pose. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. That's fun. Nice, everybody tuck the toes, lift the hips. One final time, we're just gonna see, this has been a really preparatory class. We're just gonna see how it feels to lift the right leg, right glute, left hip flexor, not low back. And I wouldn't be surprised if you could lift that leg a little bit higher now without dropping into the low back. 
as you are ready, right knee to right wrist. Here you go, Gigi, pigeon pose. And you can see that all of those poses really prepared us to have more open hip flexors, stronger glutes, and less effort into the low back. So give yourself something to rest on, a pillow, a block, your hands. And then let the breath take over. Let the breath move into the spaces that feel tight. So June is obviously my favorite month of the year. And one reason is it's birthday month. Another reason, the month I got married, we had a kid this month. So we're a house full of Geminis. But I also love that summer begins this month. It just feels like life is joyful and a little easier in the month of June. So today we're just clearing space for this new season that's knocking on our door. Letting go of what's stored and stuck. Dusting off the shelves and making room for a bright, hot sun and all that comes with it. Let's bring ourselves up, tucking the toes, lift into downward facing dog, shake that leg out. And then let's plant ourselves in down dog and we'll switch sides. So slowly raising the left leg and finding that place where it's glute. And if you went a half an inch further, it would start to climb up into your lower back, your sacrum or your SI joint. So we're gonna stay out of that, but just see, see if you can come a little farther than where we started. And then we'll slowly come into pigeon pose. Left knee to left wrist. Easing ourselves down. And breathing as if our hips had lungs. Purpose. So a practice of hip opening with a purpose of more awareness, movement that makes more sense, more comfort in our own bodies. There's a more subtle purpose in this practice as we think of the muscles that have the strength to do the work and not pushing so hard that we cause pain in other areas. Okay, to see how that applies to our lives. How can we live in a way where we can be purposeful and intentional and do the work using the tools we have without going overboard and causing pain to ourselves or each other. Purposeful practice can teach us about purposeful living. Let's let our hands come underneath our shoulders. Let's tuck our toes and slowly sweep the leg up. Shake it out, 
move it around. And release. Let's lower our knees to the ground, sweeping the legs around in front of us. Maybe give a little shake, pounding the muscles, clearing the flesh. Just relax the legs that have been working so hard for us this whole class. Since we've been working glutes, let's give them a little stretch. So bending our knees, leaning back, we'll take a figure four. And in this figure four, sit tall, press your chest forward, press your knee away from you. And just let those glute muscles receive a stretch. Breathe. Extending the bottom leg, keeping that top leg crossed over. Let's hold the knee in. We'll lift the left arm up and twist around toward that right bent knee coming into a seated spinal twist. Breathing clear down into your belly, feeling shoulders expand and soften. And coming back, extend the leg out, give them a little pound, a little shake on the floor before switching sides. Left knee bent into a figure four, placing your hands behind you. The straighter your spine, the more you're gonna feel this in your hip. It's a good idea to keep your left foot flexed to protect your left knee. Sit tall, sit up out of that low back and breathe so, so deeply, purposeful breath. Each breath has a job to do. And we can just assist the breath as it makes its way through our bodies. Releasing the bottom leg, crossing over. Let's take our twist. So you can hold with your hand. You can bring the elbow out, whatever feels best to your body. Lengthen through the crown, turn toward your back shoulder. Let your breath be tall, long, deep, expansive. and returning to the center. Take a hold of the back of the knees and roll yourself down onto your back, hugging knees to chest. And if you do have a pillow or a cushion or a block next to you, you might wanna use that as we go into bridge. You don't have to, but uh, kind of nice. So as we come up into bridge, you can stay with that active glutes, not low back, stretching the hip flexors, or pull something under you to make this a little more passive. And for today, what might feel really good is to straighten one leg, test the waters there, maybe both, maybe just one. You might wanna find the right place for that block underneath you. And just let your body receive this you now passive stretch. The pillow is doing the work of the glutes so the hip flexors can be open. Avoiding the low back. The gentle inversion, inviting blood flow from the hips back up into the heart, the head, the brain.
purposeful posture, purposeful breath. I feel like sometimes we just need to convince our monkey mind that doing, seemingly doing nothing is purposeful. But in this moment, we're actually doing a lot for ourselves, for our bodies, our minds. This doing nothing is purposeful. If you are completely comfortable here, stay here a little longer. If your body is ready to move from this position, move slowly. And we'll start to find our way onto our backs and into Shavasana. Finding that place of rest, that place of surrender. place where we lay it all down at the end of all of our work. Purposefully doing nothing. Resting with purpose. you continue in this resting state, they take three very slow, very deep breaths and let them go with a soft sigh. sight leaves your body start to wiggle and move and make your slow journey back to your seat back where we started when you get there I invite you to take both of your hands over the soft space of your heart and with eyes closed, reflect on this word, purpose. It's an underlying question that every human being asks, maybe on a daily basis. What is my purpose? Why me? Why this 
Why now? As we leave this practice today, I'd like to leave with you a prayer written by one of my favorite teachers, Sean Korn, that she wrote when she was working with young women in detention. And this is the prayer I read every time I'm sitting in my car getting ready to walk into the prison. And maybe it will speak to you as you step out into this day, living whatever it is that's your calling, your purpose. May I wake up. May I have the strength to continue walking this path with clarity and integrity and embrace all I experience as opportunities for growth Please, God, transform my resistance into surrender, my judgment into compassion, and my fear into faith. May this faith be the quality of my being that moves me forward on this journey. May I trust that all that is revealed is for the highest good of my soul. May my heart open to these women. May I learn fully from their wisdom. May they reveal to me both the depth of my ignorance and the power of my love. May I experience that love fully within our infinitely shared spirit and know that we are one, we are whole, and we are blessed with an ever-present light. I say to you, my friends, we are one, we are whole, and we are blessed with ever-present light. Namaste. Namaste.